Travel consideration provided by. Discover automatically matches all the cash back you earn at the end of your first year. Dollar for dollar. Millions of people a year get their cash back matched. What are you waiting for? Unlimited cash back match only from Discover. Tomorrow on ET. Prince Harry's first official royal engagement since Meg's it, what you didn't see. Plus, the reason that we are here at Disneyland, we're taking the show to Disneyland with a sneak peek at the new Star Wars ride tomorrow on ET. Happening now. A man left clinging to life after being shot at a West Side car wash. I'm Devin Clark, and coming up, we'll tell you where police are in the investigation and what witnesses in the area say they saw. Less than a week after Governor Greg Abbott announced Texas would no longer accept refugees, a federal judge says that's illegal. We have the latest coming up. We have an update on the latest trial for Janine Jones. What's next for the so-called killer nurse? I'm Whitney Wilde in Washington, and historic day here on Capitol Hill as the final phase of impeachment begins. It was warm and humid today, but it changes tomorrow. We've got a frontal boundary, some rain chances. We'll talk about how much rain we can expect coming up. Taking a trip soon? Before you start packing, how is your luggage holding up? We have a 12 on your side report of which brands are rated best for durability. A new initiative is offering new job opportunities for military spouses. We'll tell you all about it. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, a traffic alert in Universal City. If you're headed out the door, you might want to steer clear of Loop 1604 and Pat Booker Road. This is what it looks like. Crews are working to clear a wreck involving an 18 wheeler. Universal City police say that the big rig crashed underneath the southbound bridge of Loop 1604. It will be closed until it's repaired, which police say could be a long term project. To other news, troopers stopping a wanted man by shooting out the tires on his truck. It happened on Highway 16 near the Bear Atascosa County line. DPS says a trooper was parked on the side of the highway. He was told to be on the lookout for the man wanted on a felony warrant. The trooper spotted him, initiated a traffic stop, but the driver didn't stop. DPS says troopers fired two rounds at the tires, forcing the driver to finally pull over. He was taken into custody. No one was hurt. San Antonio police also looking for a man who fired eight shots into a northwest side apartment. Police called to the High Point South Apartments on Wurzbach Road in the medical center. They were called in by a man who had witnessed it all. That man told us around one o'clock that a UPS delivery man who was dropping off a package at this apartment told him to call the cops because his neighbors were fighting. He says when he looked outside the door, he found the suspect being thrown out of the apartment. I tell the suspect, hey, I'm going to call the cops. That's when the guy said, well, you better. And when I walk in, I hear shots, pop, 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 about six, seven, eight shots. Nevertheless, no one inside the apartment was hit. Police are still looking for that suspect. A man left fighting for his life after being shot at a West Side car wash this morning. San Antonio police say they still don't know who did it, but they do know the suspect drove off in a gray Ford Taurus. The gunfire happening in broad daylight. Witnesses say it appeared the victim was waiting for someone moments before he was shot. Devin Clark arrived shortly after and spoke with police and onlookers as investigators process the scene. It happens all the time over here. Renisha Turner says she isn't surprised at this morning shooting scene at the pump house car wash right next to the Dairy Queen where she works on South General McMullen and Saralvo. I was working. I was having a normal day. I saw all the cops pulling up. San Antonio police say a man in his 20s was found standing outside of his car shot in the upper torso. He was taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries after the shooter took off. He was able to give us just a little bit of information, but our, our really our main concern at that point is to get it getting him the medical care he needs uh, as soon as he can. And then at some point when he's a little bit more stable, we're hoping he'll pull through from his injuries. We can get some more information. The property has multiple surveillance cameras that could help the investigation. Still, those who've washed their vehicles here in the past without incident say they too will now be on the lookout for suspicious activity. Uh, a tomar un poco más de precaución. Truck driver Jose uh, Trevino uh, says, uh, I'll take a little more uh, precaution. Uh, if I see something suspicious, uh, I'll report it quickly. Investigators have not mentioned a motive in 
in this case, but said at first glance it didn't appear to be robbery. San Antonio police say that they got numerous calls around 10 o'clock this morning for the shooting, which means there are witnesses that they are talking to. They're still asking for anyone else with any information to come forward. You can contact the San Antonio Police Department's homicide unit at 207-7635. Reporting on the west side, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. New at five, killer nurse Janine Jones expected to agree to a plea deal with prosecutors tomorrow. Jones scheduled for a court appearance in the morning. Details of the plea agreement, though, have not been released. She was scheduled to stand trial next month in the mysterious death of a baby who was under her care as a nurse at a local hospital in 1981. Jones has already served 30 years in prison for the death of, Kerrville, of a Kerrville child who she injected with a lethal dose of muscle relaxant. Flee and fight. It's what landed one man behind bars this morning. San Antonio police pulled the suspect over at Highway 90 and Couples Road about 11 this morning. They say while they were running his information, he took off running. Officers learned he had a warrant out for his arrest. They chased him about a block away to Menifee Street where he was arrested. During that arrest, police say the man punched an officer. The two had minor injuries from jumping fences during the chase. The suspect now faces additional charges of assault of an officer and evading and resisting arrest. The San Antonio Police Department asking for some help. They need to solve a two year old cold case murder. This is the victim, Thomas Shepard. He was 26 years old when he was shot and killed in August of 2018. His body was found in an apartment complex on Lavender Lane near South WW White Road. San Antonio police say that he was shot multiple times. He died at the scene. Two years later, though, they say there is a person of interest in the case, and they're hoping anyone with information could come forward. If you have information that could help solve this murder, Call SAPD's Homicide Unit at 210-207-7635. A controversial decision put on hold. A federal judge today temporarily blocking President Trump's executive order, allowing state and local governments to reject refugees who are being resettled in the United States. Governor Greg Abbott had announced Texas would be the first state to abide by the order requiring written consent for refugee resettlement. The associate pastor of Travis Park Church says he's encouraged by today's preliminary injunction because as it is, the number of refugees who are rigorously vetted then turned over to local nonprofits that help resettle them already has been dramatically reduced by the Trump administration. It's just going to uh, hurt those, those nonprofits and also people who are seeking uh, the right way to migrate. Roger says asylum seekers are not to be confused with refugees. In fact, he says the people at the city's migrant center last year had arrived at the border as asylum seekers because the refugee resettlement program had been drastically reduced. Today, the House of Representatives took a major step in the impeachment process, voting to hand over the articles of impeachment to the Senate. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announcing her picks for the impeachment managers, as they're called, who will help guide the Senate through the trial of President Donald Trump. But with less than three weeks until the Iowa caucuses, the trial is sure to have a major impact on the race as several candidates are going to be forced to the sidelines during the Senate trial. Whitney Wild is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Whitney. It is so true. This is a really critical time for Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar because Iowa is not yet set. There is no clear front runner there. So these candidates needed that extra time to get on the ground and speak with voters one on one. Now they will be pulled off the trail sitting in this Senate trial uh, in the critical days leading up to the Iowa caucuses. Meanwhile, the White House has responded to these articles of impeachment, continuing to say the president did nothing wrong. The final stage of the impeachment of President Donald Trump is here. The emphasis is making the strongest possible case to protect and defend our Constitution, to seek the truth for the American people. Wednesday, the House approved seven managers tasked with presenting the case in the Senate trial. They include Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff and Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler, two figures who played significant roles in the House impeachment hearings. Additional evidence continues to come to light that not only 
has bolstered an already overwhelming case, but has also put additional pressure, I think, on the Senate to conduct a fair trial. That evidence includes text messages from Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and handwritten notes from his associate, Lev Parnas, released last night by the House. It's unclear whether that new evidence will be included in the Senate trial. Now, the two articles of impeachment will move to the Senate. Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he expects the trial will begin Tuesday, January 21st. However, the details of the trial, including whether witnesses will be called, are still up in the air. House Democrats may have descended into pure factionalism, but the United States Senate must not. And with a potentially weeks-long trial ahead, all senators, including the Democrats running for president, will be required to spend almost all of their time in Washington. Look, some things are more important than politics. We have a constitutional duty to do to perform here. It delivered the articles of impeachment to the Senate. This, this, these are procedural nuance here. Tomorrow morning, the Senate will actually formally receive them. So there's a difference between delivering and actually receiving. House managers will return to the Senate to read these charges against the president. Back to you. Still more procedure to go. Thank you so much, Whitney Well, reporting from Capitol Hill. Appreciate it. A progress made today on a trade deal between the United States and China. President Trump signing the initial deal today, what they're calling phase one. It includes China's pledge to more than double its purchases from U.S. farms in the first year. Just one part of a $200 billion package in a letter from China's president. He called the deal, quote, good for China, the U.S. and the whole world. And a look outside with live cam. We've got uh, some cloud covered out there right now. We're going to see clouds increasing tonight. Rain chances come back tomorrow. It was a warm day, though. We're still sitting at 77 degrees even at this hour. 76 up there in Bovardi, 76 Rio Medina. It was well above average all day long. And in fact, we started the day well above average. The low this morning, 69. That could be a record low maximum temperature. The records are 81 and 11. And 11. Almost got to the record, not quite. No rainfall today, but there is some in the forecast. In fact, some good chances tomorrow and Friday. We'll take a look at those chances coming up. Thank you, Justin. We'll check back with you in just a bit. An update to a neighborhood issue we told you about yesterday. The city has started to clear out what's left of an invasive species of plant. It was overtaking Elmendorf Lake. That's over by Our Lady of the Lake University. We did reach out to the city about this issue yesterday. They told us crews would start the cleanup today. As promised, Parks and Rec crews were there this morning and TCI was helping to haul away some of the debris and vegetation. The city does plan to continue cleaning up until all of this water hyacinth mess is cleared out. They're hoping it will be done soon. Happening tonight via holding a telephone town hall to share ideas for its VIA reimagined transportation plan and they want your input in all of this. VIA says it's a 10 year roadmap designed to better transit across the city to provide better transit across the city. The telephone town hall starts at seven o'clock tonight. You can find a link to register right now on KSAT.com. And tomorrow morning, there's a job fair for active duty military veterans and their spouses. This is happening at the Phoenician Ballroom at St. George's Maronite Center on Babcock Road. Employers like Aramark, Waste Management and USAA will be there. It is from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Still ahead on the news at five, pack your bags, but check out your bags first. If you travel this holiday season, it might be time to check your luggage, what you need to know about the top brands before your next trip up next. If you plan to do any traveling, you will need transportation, lodging, and of course, luggage. Your checklist for a good piece of luggage is probably pretty simple. You want it to hold what you need and be tough enough to withstand baggage claim. 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris has a survey result that can help you choose. Baggage can take a real beating getting from here to there. Luggage salesman Sal Carino says what his customers want is durability. People are willing to pay a premium for a product that will arrive intact. Split seams, broken zippers, or busted wheels and handles can mean the next trip that bag makes is to the dump. 
In a Consumer Report survey, Briggs and & Riley and Eagle Creek were two of the top rated brands for durability for both checked and carry-on bags. They also got high marks for how easy they are to pack and stow. Another bonus, they're among those that offer lifetime warranties. Lifetime warranties can offer some peace of mind. But you need to remember that they do come with limitations and that lifetime may not mean your lifetime. For instance, with Eagle Creek, the warranty applies to what the company says is the lifetime of the bag. Also, with some manufacturers, including Away, the warranty will not apply if you are not the original owner. And cosmetic damage is also generally not included. Even if the bag is covered under warranty, the company will likely repair it. If they do replace the bag, they may give you a different color or even a completely different model from the one that you purchased. Besides durability, Carino says the size and weight of the bag are very important to consider. Some airlines require carry-ons to be 18 pounds or less for the lowest price flights. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Take a live look outside with Sky 12 right now. All right, 77 degrees out there. Another day where it <laughs> seems way too warm for January. I'm loving it. It Justin is, Horn joins us at five. It, I should mention. Yes. I don't know that you and yeah, I have worked together. You know, I know we have it in the new year. Yeah, it's been a little bit. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, glad to be here though. And yeah, you're right about it. The the temperatures have not been winter like at all. Yeah. But we're you know to. this is uh, this is my kind of winter, especially if we're getting the rain promised. Yes, we do. This will work out okay. We do have some rain chances next couple days and I'm hoping that helps us a little bit with the drought conditions because we are still very much in a drought here around South Texas. But the low temperatures this morning, nothing short of impressive. We only got down to 69 degrees here this morning. So if we don't get below 66 by midnight, we're going to set a record for the low max temperature and the all time January max low is 70. That was set back in 1907. So we fell just short of that, but pretty impressive for January. Let's take a look at the time lapse. And we had some drizzle, some fog this morning. That went away pretty quick. And then we saw some blue skies, and it really warmed the temperatures up. 77 degrees right now. Dew point is at 64. Very humid with southeasterly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Temperatures around the area. Lakey, Joanne reporting 73 there. 73 Leon Springs. 78 in Shirts. 73 Bernie. 74 there in Kerrville. So it's a warm afternoon. That changes a little bit tomorrow because we're going to get a, a frontal battery in here that does also bring some rain chances with it. Visible satellite shows we had plenty of clouds streaming in too. Again, peaks of sun here and there, and that helped with the temperatures, but a lot more clouds tomorrow. And uh, we've got that front starting to move in. It's helping to create a few showers out there in West Texas. And right now, just to the north of us, I think it's going to slowly move in tonight into tomorrow and then stall out a little bit. So that actually enhances our rain chances some. It's not terribly cold behind the front, 50s and 40s up in the panhandle, but out ahead of it, 70s and 80s. And again, it is uh, very humid. Tomorrow's going to be tricky with this front because we're going to see some cold temperatures across the hill country where that front pushes through, but it's not going to make it all the way down to our southern counties. So temperatures there will be warm in the 80s. We're going to see a big spread here across the area, and I think here in San Antonio, probably mid 60s with uh, some decent rain chances. So as you head out the door tomorrow morning, just know the roads may be a little bit wet and you'll probably want your umbrella with you tomorrow too. By seven o'clock tomorrow morning, we're getting some of those showers for the morning commute. There could be a little bit of fog too. And I think by midday, we're starting to see more showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms out there too, especially west of San Antonio. And then by the afternoon, still scattered showers. And this continues over into Friday too. So we'll get some good rain chances then as well as this front sort of stalls out and then eventually moves back to the north. We'll get a secondary front late on Friday. This pushes through Saturday morning and then that'll bring some slightly cooler temperatures for the weekend and clear us out briefly before more rain chances show up next week. So we're in a more active pattern here. When we're talking rainfall, what can we get? Well, maybe up to an inch out to the west. I think that's a possibility. So this is sort of flipped from what we usually see, but our western counties probably going to get more rain out of this here in San Antonio, maybe up to about a quarter of an inch if we're lucky, if we get some decent downpours tomorrow, which I think is possible with that front hanging around. So for tonight, temperatures in the mid 60s. Again, it doesn't cool down much. We've still got a lot of humidity out there. Drizzle showers southeasterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, a 60% chance of rain across the board. 67 noontime, 68 by 2 o'clock. And temperatures, I think, really are going to stay pretty steady tomorrow with southeast or actually east northeasterly winds probably kicking in with that front. And uh, again, some cooler numbers off to the north. So 72 to, uh, on Friday with a 60% chance of rain. And then we uh, clear out a little bit 
uh, over the weekend. Maybe a few lingering showers Saturday morning. Sunday, a little bit cooler, 56. And of course, uh, Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We'll have some rain chances there. Cloudy skies, it will be cooler for the March. Temperatures probably in the 50s, maybe uh, even 40s to start. And then uh, some cool weather next week with more rain chances. But it is a more active pattern. It's what we want to see when it comes yeah. to, to rain. We could use it. You actually decreased the amount of rain for Martin Luther King Day yes, rain and made it a little bit warmer for those who are going to be marching. It's looking a little better, and so okay. that's, that is good news. I think that, you know, it's such a, a long march, mm -hmm. and so many people take part. I'm good. I think they're going to love that you're inching it toward it's better weather. It's an improvement. Yes. yes. All right, Spurs got to spend the last few days in South Beach, you know. Not too out. terrible. Not a bad gig. Now you got to play a tough game at home. When we come back, more about the Spurs being in Miami to wrap up their road trip. And who gets to the call to the hall today at the Pro Football Hall of Fame coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs will close out their four-game eight-day road trip tonight when they face the Heat in Miami, coming out big wins over other beasts of these, including Milwaukee, Boston, most recently Toronto. But the Spurs are facing a new challenge tonight when it comes to Miami. They own the best home record in all of the NBA at 17-1, with their only home loss of the season back on December the 13th to the Lakers at 113-110. to DeMar DeRozan coming off another spectacular performance by scoring 22 of his game high 25 points in his rematch against his old team, the Raptors, in the 105-104 victory. They will need that and more to Tonight to beat the Heat. Here's a matchup this evening against the Heat. We'll have the highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Congratulations to Pro Football Hall of Fame 15 person Centennial Slate of the Class of 2020 that was announced today. That includes former Dallas Cowboys Jimmy Johnson, their coach, which we already knew about, but also Cliff Harris, who played safety for the Cowboys from 1970 to 79, and former Eagles and Cowboys wide receiver Harold Carmichael. Unfortunately, former Jefferson Mustang, Texas Longhorns, and Mr. Falcon Tommy Nobis did not make the cut. That included 10 senior players who contributed to the game more than 25 years ago. And that's a shame because because this was Tommy's best shot at finally getting the recognition he and his family deserve. Here are the inductees for the Centennial Slate that includes Johnson and, of course, Bill Cower as the coachings. Also contributors, Steve Sable from NFL Fields, Paul Tagliabue, the NFL commissioner, and George Young, a GM for Mo uh, Baltimore, Miami, and New York. Seniors include, of course, Harris, Carmichael, uh, Covert, Dillon, and Hill, who ended up with the Rams in 77, Alex Karras, Donnie Schell, Duke Slater, Matt Speedy, and Ed Sprinkle, to name a few. Our UTSA Roadrunners take their two-game home win streak out for a little road test tonight. That's when they continue to play Conference USA in El Paso against UTEP. The Roadrunners are coming off back-to-back -back wins at the combo against Louisiana Tech, 89-73, and against Southern Miss, 80-70, to improve their conference record to 2-2. Two two. Now let's see if they can get their second road win tonight. Trying to be a better team away, you know, uh, and I think that just starts, you know, being tough and then just getting stops. Uh, so I mean, once we get it, once we get in conference play, you know, we already did, but we just got to get these wins on the on the road. You know, it's all about it's all about just getting here, getting the stops that we need at UTEP, uh, and just being aggressive. Honestly, they, they've got some terrific interior players, got some guys who can really drive. It'll be a tough challenge for us, but but again, the fact that we're we're playing fairly well right now and feeling pretty good will help us. All right, eight o'clock tip off tonight. Good luck to the Roadrunners on the road. I was going to say with that mascot, they should do well exactly. away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Sure. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We'll see temperatures in the mid 60s tonight. Not warming up all that much tomorrow. 68 degrees for high, but we will see some good chances of rain. That's tomorrow and Friday. Front comes through Saturday, clears us out briefly for the weekend. So that times out well, but then some showers come back into play next week and it does cool down some. We'll finally see some more winter like weather, not wintry weather, but winter like uh, next week. Depicting a little bit of a pattern there. Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the news at five with us. See you back here at six. World News up next.